Hey traders, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Wednesday, September 18, 2024. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? Today was the Fed Kabuki Theater FOMC interest rate announcement decision. It is a bunch of hype slash B-movie type real stuff. Above all the moving averages, the trend is your friend today on the news, if you will, on the announcement. They spiked them up to make another new high. Go to an hourly chart. You can see the spike here. And then first move being the incorrect move. They subsequently turned them out and dropped them like a stone to finish in the red on the day. All that is nonsense. What's important is how the market takes it going forward. We have a lot of stuff going on. We had a new moon, full moon yesterday. We have options expiration, quadruple witching, regular way week this week. We have a full e Sometimes markets trade up or down into these events. Today is not going to be an indicator one way or the other. What's the market going to do in week? Or is this going to be the turnaround situation? And here's the thing. Either way, it doesn't matter. Get out your sticky notes. Get out your pen. You don't need a pencil for this one. You don't need an eraser. Here's the situation. Write this down. The market's going to have another down leg. Whether or not they make another new high, they go up another 100 handles in the S&P, it doesn't matter. There's going to be another down leg, and it's certainly coming either before or after, but it's coming in and around, and certainly before the end of this year, in and around the election, before or after, it doesn't matter. It's coming within the fourth quarter of this year. You can take that one to the bank. Another thing in the wall of worry situation we can tune into, we have now the government shutdown situation discussion. We all know how that one plays out from case to case, rare cases. They do shut down the government for a few weeks. It's a fake shutdown. People are still paying taxes. The government still has an income. The government still runs essential services. Don't let them fool you by shutting down a park or a monument. It's all part of the Kabuki Theater situation. By the way, we've been looking at an hourly chart. I normally have the daily chart up there. No rhyme or reason. Spike to a new high. Finish near the low. Again, not down that much by the end of the day. The SPY was only down three-tenths of 1%. So it's a nothing burger. Above all the moving averages, the trend is still, in fact, your friend couple of days left in the trading week. Here's the weekly chart. Where are they going to close the week? We don't know. They can close the week very positive at a new high, ramp them right up into Friday, or they can begin a retracement operation, which will change the character and the current makeup of the tape. Even though it was Kabuki Day, we still have the opportunity for a morning trade during the morning rush hour or morning rush 90 minutes, if you will. Did anybody make any money today in the live room? The answer is yes. Post it under the video if you were a participant. Help a brother out. I'm not the brother. The brother and sisters are the people out there looking for solutions. They're looking for a place they can learn how the market works and make money. Period. Full stop. If this is one of those places, post your results under the video. Help a brother out. Early morning commentary, this is the zero dark 30 stuff. They were floating around flat-ish, waiting on the Fed. We don't need to belabor that point. We'll start with the northbound lane stuff, 565.15. And the southbound or flip side, we had two pivots today. We had a bull and a bear variety. Bull and bear pivots. The bull pivot, 565.15, bull variety. And... The flip side situation is heading the other direction, D5. Five minute chart, right of the vertical is today's activity. Doesn't look like much, but as you can see here, early on in the day, they were playing bouncy ball off of 562.75. They gave you the scalp, they gave you the base hit, 
they gave you a tiny morning trade. Remember, pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart, and double check the work. What's the early morning pre-FOMC storyline? Chances are they do not or don't get very far in either direction. Well, before the FOMC announcement, that turned out to be the case. They didn't get very far in either direction. Never got much below the bear pivot, never got much above or correction, didn't get to the bull pivot until the actual announcement. There's your bull pivot, 565.15. And by the way, the live room members will note I had another number on the board. I don't think we even talked about it today, but it was up here and it was at 568.10. It was on the chart. It was on my chart this morning. If you were in the live room, you saw that number, 568.10. Just above that happened to be high of day. These are at new highs. It was either a formula-driven number or some other form of hocus-pocus in order to come up with said number. Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the charts, and double-check the work. It's all in here each and every day. If you're an intraday trader and are trading or would like to trade in the S&P, options on the S&P, the ES, the MES, exchange-traded products, whatever it is, we've got the goods, the goods being the numbers. You cannot be successful trading this stuff without having the numbers. What's going on over in Camp IWM? We had a pickup in volume. We have a nice tail candle. They made a new high from here, not a new high to these highs, but they did, almost to the penny, run a test of this breakdown candle high, which comes in at 224.89. Today's high was precisely 224.94. There are no accidents nor coincidences. They finished not on the low of day, but they did put in a sign and or signal of a trend change. And it was, in fact, in the midst of an on-time type of situation. May want to heed the IWM. Traders can take a short trade against today's high. It is 224.94. Call it 225. Candle closes above that high on a daily basis. That's off the table. This is a textbook scenario. Similar situation brewing over by the folks down at the transportation department. Now, mind you, they're above the trend line, which is bullish. They're above all the moving averages, which is bullish. You do not have the same pickup in volume. You have a tail candle after running a test of a breakdown candle high, the area of. They didn't quite get to it. Sometimes they come up short and other times they have a tendency to spike them through. This was a test of a break down candle high. Doesn't mean they can't or won't go higher. They are in a bullish position above the trend line and above all the moving averages. The weekly close will be uber slash very, very important. Well, what about the Q people? We'll start with above the moving averages. The trend is your friend. We will conclude, not conclude, we will include the fact that we have lower highs brewing. We talked about this last night. We have a high, lower high, lower high. Tried to break up today, failed, but they are above all the moving averages. So nothing says we can't gap or they can't gap up tomorrow. They can't go up tomorrow into Friday for sure. There's nothing that says that cannot happen. That is on the table, certainly, while they're above all the moving averages. Remember, the trend is the dominant thing. Might want to write this down, put it on a sticky note. 468.55, this is a red line. This is a Irene type of situation. Start getting below intraday and then daily closing below, weekly closing below. That area, 468.55, can be an Irene situation for another leg lower and not just for a point or two. Write that down, put it on a sticky note. Very similar chart in the XLF today. Also another breakout attempt to new highs or 
higher than yesterday at least, and then they came back in on the Fed Kabuki theater situation. But is there anything materially wrong with the financials, especially considering we had the Fed rhetoric today? And the answer is XLF down 14 cents, one third and one percent above all the moving averages. Nothing wrong with the financials. We're going to take that at face value until proven otherwise. Let's look at this both ways. We are, in fact, the umpire calling balls and strikes, so we need to be objective. It doesn't matter. This is an XLF chart. It could be any chart. Let's use it as an example to give a lesson on being objective and being the umpire calling balls and strikes. So what do we have? First, forget these blue lines. Let's get rid of them. Forget the lines on the chart. Let's simplify everything. You have the makings of an on-time situation from the most recent low. However, you're above all the moving averages. So being above is bullish. We know that. What you did today was also run a test of the most recent breakdown candle high in the sequence. Okay, that's also first time, best time situation. So up there is resistance, first time, best time. Got an intraday pullback. That is a tradable event for those day traders. Now, the way we look at this is if they stay above the moving averages, and below the breakdown candle high, they'll be eating time off the clock, building energy to make another move higher. If they come below the 20 period moving average, start scaling lower, then something else is developing in the on time type of situation after the test of the most recent breakdown candle high in the sequence takes place. And therefore, they've morphed into the bearish mode so we don't know yet whether this is going to morph into a bearish mode or continue eating time off the clock in a bullish formation near the recent highs that's the way we look at it from an umpire's perspective at this point it can be either we don't know yet we've got to put both scenarios on the table we watch it day by day and do the constant assessment until we're confident they're doing one thing or the other. Smash mouth, anything develop here? Nothing other than the continuation of this chart looks different than most of the rest. You have the lower high situation. You have the containment of these three out of four moving averages. Down over 1% today, so it is in the leading camp, leading the markets down. Not necessarily all markets, but the semi-space is a pretty darn good proxy for the tech space as a whole. And if we lose the semis, you're losing tech. And if you lose tech, you're going to lose the rest of the market. Finished on the lows today. Tomorrow will be an important day. Do we get follow through on the downside? And where is the follow through across all the markets we get tomorrow? That will be uber important. Might want to note that. Might want to note that for later tomorrow. At some point, the next leg down will morph from somewhere to a larger move in the southern direction. Did it begin today? Will it begin at the end of the week? Will it begin next week or beyond? Time will tell. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? Without you, these videos, they're not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.